Welcome back to part three of our Ludo upcycle. So in the previous part, we added the bulk to our mouse to make him look a little bit more mousy. And in this part, we're gonna be adding his body wraps and his facial features. So I'm gonna start off by moving my mouse and my needle felting mat out of the way. And I'm gonna bring in my brush mat. Now I've got some white Shetland core wool that I've added to the mat already. And this is gonna form our body wrap for the mouse. So it's roughly about four inches in length and probably about three inches in width. So I'm just gonna take my multi-tool and I'm going to felt that down into the mat. And once this side's been roughly felted down, I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to do the same on the other side. So we're helping to muddle all of those fibres together to get one piece of felt. So you want to have something that looks roughly like this once you've felted it all down. So I'm going to move this piece out of the way. I'm going to bring in another piece of the white Shetland core wall and we're going to use this piece to make the head wrap for our mouse. So we want it to be a little bit longer. It doesn't matter if it's a bit too long because we can always tear some away once it's felted down. And not too wide. So that's probably about right. So it's about two and a half inches in width and probably about five inches in length this piece. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to felt it down onto our brush mat with our multi-tool. So once this side has been felted down, I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So we're creating another piece of felt material that we're going to add to our mouse in a minute. There we go. So I'm not too worried about these fluffy ends here. So don't worry too much about that if you have anything like that, because we can always tear these away if we've got too much wool anyway. So I'm going to take that off my mat. And now I'm going to bring my felting mat back in. So we have our mouse and our felting mat. So I'm going to take that first piece that we felted down and I'm going to place it on the back of our mouse so that it's sitting just above his neck and then just below his bottom. OK, I'm going to flip it over so he's then lying on his back. So I'm going to push him down with my fingers so he's nice and secure against the mat. I'm going to take the first piece, these, these loose ends here, and I'm going to bring them over so that they're super taut, super tight around his body. I'm then going to take my fine twisted needles and I'm going to felt that down into place just to anchor everything down initially so it doesn't come undone. And once that's anchored into place, I'm going to flip him round and I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to bring that second piece across into his torso, the centre of his tummy, hold it nice and taut, nice and tight, push him down into the mat. And then once again, I'm going to use my fine twisted needles to felt that down into the mouse's belly. Just be careful to mind your fingers when you're doing this. And once that's all secured into place, we can then let go and then we can just felt as we would normally felt. So with these loose pieces here, I'm going to really focus on pulling them round and then felting them down towards the centre of our mouse's bottom. If you've got loads and loads of loose fibre here and it's going way past the legs, you might want to tear some away because you'll have too much wool. And what you'll have is too much gathering and too much wool bulk um, felted into your mouse and it'll just look a bit too wool heavy. So if you think you've added too much, don't be afraid to tear some away because it's better to tear some away and add some more in later on if you haven't got enough rather than not tearing it away. And then you're stuck with this kind of big lump of wool that's been felted down into your mouse and you can't really get rid of it. Well, you can but it's it's a pain it's a pain and then it looks untidy and it takes longer to correct the problem than it does just to add in a little bit more wool if you've taken away a little bit too much so it's always better to just go in a bit cautiously when it comes to your quantities of wool that you're using on your sculptures even if it means building it up gradually it's still quicker than correcting the problem later on if you've got too much wool trust me I've been there and got the t-shirt, so it's definitely easier to do everything gradually. Like the tortoise and the hare. So what I'm doing here is I'm just going to felt around the tail and I'm pushing it towards the front of the mouse, this wool here. Just going careful not to break my needles on the wire. I'm just felting that down and making it disappear into the bottom center of our mouse. I'm going to start shaping the wool around the body so I'm going to get rid of any looseness ensuring that I'm felting around the back area 
keeping that slope in that we spoke about in the previous tutorial. We're just felting it all down. So we're getting some shaping in there. Don't be afraid to move his arms around. I just felt under his armpit as well, just to create more of a, a waist shape and more of that narrowing where his chest will be as well. And then I'm just going to flip him round. And this loose wall here, I'm just going to felt that into the back of the head. Now the body wrap's been all felted into place, the next thing I'm going to do is just add a bit more white just at the lower part of his tummy, just to cover up a bit more of that pink area that I added earlier on. So I'm going to go back to my white shirt and core wall, and we're tearing off just a very tiny amount here, not very much at all. So that's potentially even too much. Uh, that's not too bad actually. And then I'm just going to felt that in. We don't want to use a really heavy thick piece, we want to use quite a thin piece so you can still see the pink coming through but it's just not quite as quite as densely pink as it was a moment ago. I want it to be really subtle the colours in this mouth so I don't want it to be too in your face. And then I'm just going to bring again any looseness around the back of the legs and then between the legs as well. Get that all felted in. Now that additional piece has been added, what we want to do next is we want to add some creases to our mouth to give the impression of kind of fat rolls and where his legs are bent up, where he sat down. So I'm going to take my fine needles again and the first thing I'm going to do, like we did in our previous mouse tutorial, is I'm just going to find where the natural kind of arch of his leg is to his body to create these kind of little thighs. Just to give that a bit of shaping and then I'm going to do the same on the other side. And you want these to be symmetrical if you can, where he sat down. If he wasn't sat kind of sort of dead centre on, then they don't need to be symmetrical. It really depends on which way his body goes. But for this one, they want to be symmetrical. I'm just going to get those indented a bit deeper. Now I've added in my creases in his legs, what I want to do next is I want to add in some little kind of rolls of skin where he can kind of naturally bend over to be looking at his counters and things like that when he's playing the game. So I'm going to go on one side here, I'm not going to do both sides, and I'm just going to add some little indentations like he's kind of bending over and his skin's creasing. So I'm just going to go in first of all relatively high. I'm just bring it round to the front. I'm not going all the way round. So I'm just starting from where his back starts all the way round to probably just before where his belly button would naturally go. I'm just going to get that nice and deep so it can be seen properly. Okay, so that looks good. Another one just up here, but I'm not going to go all the way around this time. I'm just going to do a little one so that when he's bending down with his head and looking down at his counters, as his body, as his body curves over, he's creating these little cute fat rolls. And then I think I'm going to do a little one around his leg as well. And you can be quite creative with this and just go with what you think. And then I'm going to do another one round here too. And then I'm just going to do one round on his back area as well. So I'd always be quite sparing with these, don't go too crazy with them. But I think especially when a creature is sat, I think they're quite nice. I think they just add another kind of 3D element to the, to the character and to the sculpture. So the last thing I want to do here is I'm going to add a little belly button in the middle of his belly. Because he's naked. So I'm just going to find the centre. Just felt that in there nice and deep. There we go. Cool. So he's looking like that at the moment. So he's looking pretty cool, but he's not finished because we need to add his head. So I'm going to go back to my head wrap and I'm going to bring it and I'm going to place it just initially just over his head and just see where it sits. Okay, so I'm just going to bring it back a bit. So I want these loose fibres here to sit under his chin and then probably not go down any further than his chest area. 
then I'm going to bring this piece down to the back. So I'm going to hold this into place. I'm going to take my fine needles. The first thing I'm going to do is just find his neck and just tack that down there. And then I'm just going to very lightly tack in those loose fibers into his torso, and his chest area. Okay, and then I'm going to flip him round onto his belly. And then I'm just going to probably remove a bit here. I don't want quite as much as that. I'm just going to take some away. I'm going to take my fine needles again. And then I'm just going to felt those loose fibers into the back of his neck and his back and bottom. Again, not going too crazy with the felting at the moment, just felting it all down loosely. So it can't go anywhere. So the next part can be quite tricky if you don't do it methodically. So I'm going to lift his arm up and I'm going to place him on the side with his arm up. I'm going to take my medium needles, I'm going to bring this arm down for the moment. And with my medium needles side by side, I'm just going to very carefully, so I'm not really felting this part, I'm more felting the end of the fibres into the top of his arm, so what would be his shoulder, okay? Next, I'm going to turn him, and I'm going to use my needles one over the other now, and I'm going to felt through the centre of this loose piece here. I've got a little bit too much there, I don't want as much as that, so I'm just going to tear some away. Because what we don't want is to have loads of additional wool bulking around the shoulder and the arm. And then I'm just going to turn him around again and I'm going to do the same on this side. And then once I've split those, I'm going to do the same with the, the other sections. So just going down the centre of that section that we've just made. And then gradually, just felting it all down. And like icing a cake, you'll find that you get a nice, even, unclumpy finish. So now I'm going to lift his arm up and I'm just going to use my needles side by side now just to finally felt that into his neck area. And then I'm going to turn him over and I'm going to do exactly the same thing on the other side. So I've done the same thing on the opposite side. So now the head wrap is nice and securely in place. So what we want to do next is we want to go back to our fine twisted needles and we're going to shape this and felt it all down properly. So what I want to do first of all is just go over the whole head and just get that head wrap that we've just added integrated with the core wall underneath, okay? What you don't want to do is start felting directly into the nose and flattening it. So be cautious with that and try and avoid doing that if you can, because we're going to shape that a bit more later on. So all we want to do at the moment is just felt down the, sort of the top of the head, the back of the head, ensuring it's all connected to the core wall that we added initially to create that shaping. And then we can start shaping the actual nose itself. So you just want to be certain that you're getting rid of any kind of pockets of air, any looseness. So use your finger if you need to. We don't want it to be really firmly felted. We want to have some give to it because what we want to do is be able to add his facial features and, and get them nice and deeply inset into the face. So we don't want to go too heavy handed. So I'm just lightly using my needles to felt everything down. And you want to get to a stage where you felted all of this down and it looks like this. So as you can see here, I've felted down all of the head wrap so it's nicely integrated with the core wall underneath now. So the next thing I want to do is I want to start shaping the nose and making it a bit more pointed. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my thumb and my fingers, or my thumbs and my fingers I should say, and I'm just going to push this forward and squeeze, okay? So it's kind of doing this shape, like this, okay? And then once I've squeezed it, I'm then going to felt it down into place very lightly. So this is a really good technique for shaping your wool and shaping your sculptures because I've said this in a previous tutorial but wool I think is better than clay in some respects because you can squeeze it into the shape that you want it to do but it's incredibly forgiving and if you don't like the, the way you've squeezed it, if it doesn't sit right, you can just leave it and then eventually it'll just go back to its former form. Whereas with clay, you don't have that luxury. Once you squeeze it, you're going to have to re-manipulate it in some other way. So by doing it this way and then just lightly felting it into position once you've squeezed it, it's much easier. 
Not, I'm not going in really deeply with my needles here. I'm just going in enough to felt that wool down and keep that shape where I've squeezed. Now that I've shaped the face of my mouse, what I want to do next is add his nose. So I'm going to go back to my pink wool bats and I'm going to take off a very, very small slither. We don't want anything massive because we're only making something very, very tiny. So this will be too much, but it's fine to work with for the moment. So we're going to make a triangular shape for our nose. So I'm going to hold the wool in my right hand and then with my left hand, I'm going to fold over those loose fibers there. So we've got this straight flat edge, okay? Then I'm going to fold over this left corner and then I'm going to fold it down like that. Then I'm going to fold into this loose area here to flatten that off. And then I'm going to keep doing this process until, I reckon one more, in fact, no, that's enough. I've got this triangular shape here, which I'm then just going to hold on my mat with my finger using my nail to hold it down and just felt this into position so it can't unravel quickly, like that. And then once it's been felted down, I'm then just gonna shape it just to make it a bit smaller and soften any sharp edges. And then once you've got a rough triangular shape, what I'm gonna do is then place my nose so that the flat side is going up towards the eyes and then the pointy end is going down towards the nose. And I'm gonna place it about here. And then once again, I'm gonna hold it down with my nail and I'm just gonna tack down the edges first of all. And then once it's all tacked into place and I've felted down all of the sides, I'm then just gonna move my hand out of the way and then just properly felt it. But again, we're not going too heavy handed because I don't wanna flatten all of that hard work that I did earlier on to get that slight point shape for the nose. But you just wanna felt it enough so it's nicely integrated in with the rest of the face. Now we've added our nose and that's all securely in place. What I wanna do next is create a bit of a muzzle for him. So I'm gonna take some more of my white Shetland core wool and I'm gonna make the same shape that I did with the pink merino wool bats a moment ago, but with the white core wool instead. So I'm just gonna fold over that edge and make a small triangular piece. And then I'm just gonna felt that down. We don't have to be quite as precise this time round in terms of the shaping of this. It doesn't matter if it's quite rough as long as it's a triangular shape, okay? So I'm just gonna lift that off so it doesn't adhere to the mat. So you want to make two of these triangular pieces. So here's one I made earlier. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna place these against the flat underside of our mouse's nose. So I'm gonna put one here. And again, I'm just gonna start off by felting down the sides first and then felting down the middle areas. And this just creates a bit more shape around his nose and his mouth area. Gets, gives us a bit more of a point for that mouse nose that we're trying to achieve as well. Now that they're added into place, I'm gonna go back to my white Shetland Corwell. I'm gonna take some very small sections and I'm gonna place them over the muzzle and the nose that we've made. And I'm gonna felt those down using my fine needles. And what we're doing here is we're just integrating everything together with the rest of the face to make it all look like one, so it's not like separate sections, if you like. But we wanna do it gradually. We don't wanna go in again with a really thick piece because it may be too much. And also, I wanna kind of soften the pink on this nose a bit, but I don't wanna make it, you know, I don't wanna cover it over for a start, and I don't wanna make it so covered over that you can barely see that there's any pink there at all. So that's why it's important just to add thin layers and go gradually. I'm just going to add another layer there and I'm felting past those triangular shapes that we made with the white Shetland wall. So we're blending it in with the rest of the face. Now that I've added those two sections, I'm going to add one more section just to really blend everything in. So I'm going to go back to the wall, take a little bit more and just layer it on top of each other. But, but this time I'm not going to put anything over the nose. I'm just going to place it over the muzzle going to go over the nose a bit but what I'm going to do is initially just felt it down under the neck so it can't go anywhere felt it around the sides a 
and then just bring it using my needles off of the nose and just felt that down into the, the gap between those two additional pieces. And I'm just gonna felt all of this down, being careful not to flatten it too much and get rid of any of that lovely bulk that we built up earlier on. So you should end up with something that looks like this and you can see now that we're really starting to get that nose shape in for the mouse he's looking a lot more mousy and those additional pieces that we added have nicely blended in with the rest of the face and you can't see that they're separate additional sections that we added in to create that shaping so what i'm going to do now is i'm just going to take my embroidery scissors and i'm just going to trim away any of these excess pieces of fiber that are being a bit naughty and just sticking out I'm not going to do it too much yet because we're not finished but just a, just a little bit just so it makes it easier for me to see everything the next thing we want to do is we want to add some eyes in and because this is like a child mouse with children everything is a lot lower down and closer to the nose and bigger so i'm going to place his eyes quite low down and quite close to his nose so i think about here is probably about right so i'm just using my fingers here to create some indentations as to where I think the eye should go, just to kind of get an initial idea. That looks pretty good to me. So what I'm gonna do now is just go to my single medium needle and I'm just gonna felt an eye socket for those eyes using those indentations I just made with my fingers as a guide for the eye socket. And we want it to be quite deep and relatively large, probably about half a centimetre in diameter. And I'm just gonna keep checking both sides to make sure they're even as well, because the last thing I want is for him to have wonky eyes. We want his eyes to be nice and symmetrical. So every now and then I'm just gonna look at him from the front, and make sure that looks okay, which it does. You want to get to a stage where your eye socket is roughly this deep, so relatively deep, probably enough to get the tip of your baby finger into. And once you've got to that stage, we then want to get some of our brown merino roving. So you don't need a lot of this, you just need a little bit. I'm going to actually split this in half, I think. And then I'm just going to roll these two pieces between my fingers because we want them to be roughly the same size. And keep rolling them because that helps with the felting process anyway. I'm just going to take a bit more for this side and you'll be able to feel between your fingers if they're roughly the same size as well so I think that's about right so then I'm just going to put that one to one side I'm going to place this one in the hole that I've made and then initially just felt it down using my medium needle so that it's nice and deeply inset into the head and then I'm going to put the other one in and do the same thing on this side so the eyes are added, so what we want to do now is we want to start shaping them a little bit to make them look more childlike and more cute. So my favourite technique is to take the inner corner and just felt it upwards. So I'm basically using my needle to push the brown wall upwards. Just check that they look about the same, that one just needs a bit more. And then the outer corner, I'm then gonna use my needles to just push the wall downwards. There we go, so the eyes are added. So what we wanna do next is add some white. So I'm just gonna take a pinch of that coral that we've been using throughout. And again, I'm just gonna roll it between my fingers. And then I'm just gonna place one little dot in the lower inner corner of the eye because he's going to be looking at the board game you see so we want them to be looking downwards just be quite light with your felting here you don't have to go in really heavy handed and then i'm going to place the other one in the same position on the other side So the mouse is now looking like this. So what I wanna do next is just add a little bit of light 
just above where we've added the pupils. So I'm just going to go back to that wall again and just make a slightly smaller dot that we're going to place in the upper, in the upper outer corner of the eye. So I'm just going to put that there and I'm just going to very carefully felt that down. But you want it to be smaller than the pupil. There we go, like that. And then I'm going to do the same on the other side. There we go. So we've got our eyes in place. So what we want to do now is do a bit of shaping. So again, I'm going to go back to my method of pushing and manipulating the wall with my fingers and then felting it into position. Because what I want to do is I want to lift this nose up to make it look more mousy. So I'm going to push it inwards and pull it up and then felt that into position. Pushing up. And then I'm just going to use my finger and my thumb. I'm going to, I'm going to push my thumb up into its neck, lifting its head up. And then I'm using my nail just to make that indentation there into his nose. And then I'm just going to, again, felt that into position. We get a lovely, nice, cute, childlike shape there. There we go. So we've got a lovely, we've got a lovely looking face. It's really taking shape now. The next thing I want to do is I want to add his mouth in. So I'm going to go back to that brown wall that we had earlier. So I'm rolling the fibre between my fingers. So we're creating almost like this rope-like piece of fibre. And then I'm just going to place it in that gap between those two sections that we added earlier where we put the muzzle on and then I'm just going to use my fine needle side by side and very carefully just felt a short amount of that wall down underneath the nose and then the excess piece I'm just going to then bring that down on top of the piece we just added What I want to do now is I want to create a kind of like a concentration face for this mouse. So I'm going to just pull apart the fibres. And I think I want to have more, more kind of mouse going up this way than I do on the downside. So I kind of want it almost kind of like on a slant. I don't know what this is going to look like, but I'm going to try this and see what it looks like. If it looks rubbish, I'll just take it out and start again. So I'm going to tack it into place. See how this looks. I want to introduce the tongue of concentration. Have you ever been in a situation? I get it a lot when I'm driving and I'm fiercely concentrating if I'm trying to pull out of a tricky junction or something like that. The tongue of concentration comes out. And that's what I want to do here with this mouse. It's kind of incorporate the, the tongue of concentration. I'm just going to get rid of that brown there. I don't need all that. And then I'm just going to felt this piece up a little bit higher. Doing a bit of a sly side smile at the moment. Just going to felt in a little indentation there at the corner of his mouth. And I really want to felt this in to get this again really deeply set into the face. So it looks like it's part of the face and it's not kind of like a linear thing. That's quite cool. And then I think what I'm going to do. I'm just going to get a bit of my pink wool, not too much. I'm just going to place it just at the corner of where his mouth curls up. And I'm going to just felt that down against the brown, create a little tongue for him. And if it looks rubbish, I'll take it off. But I quite like the idea of him having his little tongue poking out where he's thinking about what his next move's going to be. He's like, yeah, I could go here, I could go here. You never know, he might even strip naked to show that he's not cheating. 
Did anyone see that on the news? The chess guy? I didn't even realise you could cheat at chess until I saw that article on the news the other week. It's like I'll strip naked to prove I wasn't cheating. Oh yeah, I like that. That's good. I'm going to get a bit more of that wool and I'm just going to felt that in a bit more, make it a bit heavier. Just take a little bit more of it. And I'm just using my medium needle to do this, but I'm just using it really, really lightly. I'm just going to felt around the tongue so the tongue is prominent and the rest of the face kind of is slightly underneath it. Okay, so I've added the tongue in. I'm undecided as to whether I like it or not. I'm really not sure. If you could let me know in the comments below whether you think I should keep it or whether you think I should get rid of it, that would be great. I'm going to keep it in place for the moment because I'm kind of, I'm not sure. I don't love it, but then I think by the time I've added everything else in and I've done a bit more shaping, will it work? Don't know. I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to keep it in. It's a learning experiment just to see if this kind of look sort of works in my mice. So that's the end of part three. So in tomorrow's part, we're going to be adding the ears to our mouse. We're also going to be finishing his arms off and then we're going to be incorporating him into the Ludo game and sort of giving that a bit of an upcycle. So I will see you tomorrow with more needle felting. Until then, have a wonderful day and I will see you very, very soon. Bye.